thing it just means you're brave enough to be yourself <laughs> Like the other big success of me street brother they sent me to the schools where they try to reform ya felt like the honest kid who's in California I'm an untucked darling and I'm proud to be I'm an untucked darling doesn't bother me I'm a strange bird baby I'm the first to say I'm a strange bird baby it's the only way one of these things is not like the other took a little while for my talent to uncover discovered Different prizes, we see different lines. We hear different voices, we see different signs. We have different callings, we're on different crimes. No, I'm different by design. So uh, Lucky and I are going to go find some polyester resin and there's one place that's a few miles away, not too bad of a drive. Um, yeah, so we're going there to go get some polyester. So wherever we can, we're using polyester resin because epoxy is virtually impossible to find down here. Anyway, so if you are doing a job and your uh, dog doesn't want to let you shoot a video, I'm not talking to you. No, I'm talking to the people over here. Don't you understand? No, you don't. Stay out of my mouth. You gotta stop it. Hey, big bumps, stop. 
Anyway, we're gonna go get some resin if the dog lets me. So as you can see, our guys are very hard at work here. We have lots of projects going on all at once. Grinding while you're fiberglassing, not the ideal thing to do, but uh, we have a lot of square footage to cover as you can see. And right now Martine is covering or capping up our two portholes. We had some nice hatches here, but due to the new design, we have uh, changed the plan and we've closed these guys off. And uh, there's lots more steps to make that correct, which he will be doing with fiberglassing over it and fairing it in with fillers and primers and all that very, very soon. And as you can see here, Aldo is teaching our young guy, who happens to be Martin's son, um, how to fiberglass. And as you can see, there's a couple techniques, which maybe you know, and right now he's getting the air bubbles out. And I had the right tools for this. I had the hard roller and all that, but I think along the way they left the resin on and uh, they got wasted. So these are techniques if you don't have the hard rollers and all that, this is a good way to do it. And um, I think overall this will work just fine. It's very strong still. And in regards to resins, we have been going back and forth on certain areas of the job between polyester and epoxy. And if you know Mexico, epoxy is very expensive and even worse, it's very hard to find. So up the road, as you saw in the beginning of this episode, I was on the way to go purchase some polyester resin. Now here is an interesting fact. Polyester resin is about $20 a gallon in Mexico. It's very, very cheap. And I was very thrilled to hear that because even in the States, polyester is not that cheap. You can get it for like 40, 50 bucks a gallon usually. So when I came down here, I was like, well, if we have to, we'll use polyester. And polyester does have some advantages that you might know. One is heat resistance. They are very, very high temp rating to hold form over epoxy, which I've learned the hard way once back when I was manufacturing kayaks. I used to own a company called Malibu Kayaks, and I used to buy a lot of product. And my products I'm buying for this job, the All Grip and West Systems and other products, I'm getting at wholesale prices. I have OEM accounts. So all the All Grip, I normally get at about 50% off the retail. And the West Systems at about 45%. So you would have thought I would have really stocked up on West Systems, and I thought I did. I estimated the job to use about 25 gallons due to the composites are already built, and I'll just be doing all the joints. But lo and behold, I clearly underestimated it. And right about here, at this stage of our of our project, I'm into this job about 50 gallons. So I had to find ways to get other epoxy, and I'd like to give a shout out to Charlie, a neighbor in the yard who's got a huge catamaran project he's been working on for years. And Charlie had some cloth I could buy off him, so I had a few rolls of six inch biaxle, which was great. It was very, very helpful. But as you can see here, this um, material I had to buy locally, and it was cut by our guys. I don't think it was tape. I think it was in a big 40 inch wide roll. Anyway, Aldo is using right now, I believe, polyester resin. Um, I could, yeah, the, the bottle is behind him. So areas were, were chosen to use polyester were usually ones that weren't essential for um, epoxy. There are some advantages to epoxy for strength, but overall polyester will do the job just fine. But keep in mind, there is one disadvantage of polyester I was unaware of until I got down this road a little bit, was it will take three times more polyester resin to do the job of one time amount of epoxy. So when you're buying epoxy resins, I highly recommend go to Amazon online or whatever and find them for a two gallon kit you can find uh, for around a hundred bucks. And I was doing that occasionally when I could get resins down here. So anyway, um, as you can see, we're doing a lot of interior work and uh, there's a lot of glassing. So for those naysayers out there who are saying that I'm not doing enough fillers, the walls still look rough, there's a ton more work to do here and you will see in the soon to come episodes on this. So hang tight, don't, don't uh, uh, jump the gun and say that I'm cutting corners and I'm not gonna have smooth walls because I will. There will be loads of all grip primer being put on here, more sanding, more filling. There's a lot coming down the track. So hang tight and uh, let's get back to the music.
How's it looking, Aldo? So what we have here is a problem. Turns out our um, our roof, this tan side, has got a gel coat issue, a major gel coat issue. So everywhere we put the tan, we're now needing to grind off the gel coat to this honeycomb, and we're going to have to uh, recoat this with 407 to fill all the gaps, and then we're going to fiberglass it. That will be our problem solved. But man, with a 20 by 20 foot roof, it's a lot of labor, a lot of sandpaper. A lot of materials to get this right. So, hard to build him a boat. Sometimes there's unforeseen work, and we have it for sure. Anyway. This is one hell of a productive day. Very stoked. These guys are great. Well guys, it's hot. We're taking lunch. And I'm taking the boys to a lunch today. Right guys? Let's get some food. Hi, hi. Yeah. All right, let's go. So we're going up the block to a really good seafood, little local place. It's pretty good. Anyway, end of the day. It's only half day today, holiday time. All right, so we've been here talking for a while. We just got the food. It's been very crowded. The whole place. Mucho, mucho personas. Ah, that's the way to do it. Ceviche. Ceviche. These guys eat well over here. Hey guys. Okay, so now it's time to build the interior. I have been toying with ideas on the galley. So right now, this is where the galley is going, along this wall. So there will be an island over there. There will be the countertop here. The other day I built this. So I drew a line at 35 inches, basically, is my start. And so um, I've been doing a lot of cutting, been doing a lot of measuring already. I didn't want to bore you with all these details. And uh, the refrigerator I'm working with is the LG smaller, but still almost full size. I'm trying to make a level surface for that, which I did. I basically cut a piece of my carbon foam, which I've had, it's feather light, which I like. I went back and forth with the level. I finally found the perfect spot. So once the refrigerator is in place, I highly doubt that can even move because up on top here, I plan to build a cabinet just above the window. There's going to be shelving, maybe some doors. And so that will overhang across the refrigerator up here. And that most likely will lock it 100% in place. But I wanted to leave a little gap. So if I ever have to pull it out for maintenance or replacement, I'll have enough room in the walkway. It's 24 wide, so I'll make a 25 inch uh, wide floor space so I can definitely take it out if I ever need to replace it or maintain it or do something like that. You don't want to have to tear apart your cabinets, at least that's how I see it. So I know it will last a long time as a 10 year warranty, but you never know. So the beam here, there's two beams. There's the one on top, the one on the bottom, and there's over two inches, maybe even close to three inches of plywood between. So that wall is plywood and it kind of goes in and out. It depends on what part. So when the guys come back in on Monday, I want to have them grind everything down and glass that whole wall. As I build my cabinet, my vertical supports that go perpendicular to the crossbeam, I'm planning to glass in very well. And I do have four of them in mind. So when the four are installed, that will add a lot more stability uh, forward and aft that I don't think I'll ever have to really worry about. But just to be safe, we're gonna glass them in really, really solid to add that extra. Hence the whole boat, we've over glassed everything on all the seams. We've been doing a lot of work to fair it down so it looks pretty good once you put paint on it. And so right now, I'm doing the same mentality with every step as I go forward. Epoxied in, really, really solid, no hardware. I'm trying to avoid all the hardware and taking off 
a lot of pieces on this boat. Um, if you don't know, but steel of any kind of fashion, steel or stainless or brass, or whatever, weighs a lot. Hinges, slides on drawers, there's a lot of weight. I'm trying to save weight wherever I can due to the structure I'm building. And so far I've been doing very, very good. I've been weighing everything. I have a bed scale and everything I've been taking off. If I throw it in the parking lot, I eventually break up the scale and I weigh even the scraps. Anyway, I'm right under 3,000 pounds. I've been doing a little estimation of what's already done with the glass and the honeycomb and the roof and all the other supports. And it's looking about half of the weight I've been taking off. Plus, I'm really distributing the weight better. I'm bringing the weight more towards the center of the boat. So it's really going to be balanced out nicely. I've got 42 inches of headroom, which I finally measured. So I can do a lot with down there. I can do storage. I can um, uh, basically have shelves and put my heavier stuff down here. Here's a quick look underneath. So basically I've cleared everything out. Now it's a matter of just just trying to figure out where I want the shelves, where I'm going to put the batteries and organize and take out the last part of the cabinets, which I will be doing once I start on this project and really get it dialed in. Yeah, the plumbing, electrical, all is going to come down the line. Right now, I'm just trying to get this boat built as quickly as possible, as properly as possible. So I'm really pushing hard. I cut the toe kicks in. I also did some sanding too. So. Basically, the sheets of um, honeycomb I have are already fiberglass and they're gel coated on the outside, but the gel coat is very, very shiny. So when you have very shiny surface and you want to bond it to epoxies or polyester resins, you definitely have to sand it down, dull it, so there's more to grab onto. If it's shiny, it just won't last. It won't stick for a long time. It might seem like it sticks, but no time at all, it comes off. So you've got to sand it down to a very, very dull finish where you see no more shine at all, then you're ready to go. So right now, I've cut the four sides. They're all set to go. They're already sanded, they're trimmed. Now let's go upstairs and see how it looks. As you can see, uh, there is a quick put together that I'm gonna epoxy the floor, the walls, under the countertop, back of the countertop, and then my guys are gonna glass everything together. I'll have them do a three inch tape on all the seams, all the parts of the wall that they'll connect to, the back of the wall, everything will become one solid block. I wanna go as light as possible, so holes might be my best option for lightness with no hardware, no drawer slides, and no extra extra material. Right now we have room for the refrigerator over here. We're gonna have the stove top area right about here and a lot of counter space. And what I'd really like to do on the end here is make a hole that I can pick a lid up at any time and put trash in and have a trash can situated below. I'm gonna trim this back and figure out the last measurements on the countertop. And then when my guys come in, we're, we're probably gonna cut the edges and I'm gonna use a nice, uh, like a mahogany down here, there's a nice hard wood that I'm gonna go about a probably an inch thick and do a nice splash around the edges, around the back here, all the way through. So it will really tie it in super nice. It'll have a nice touch and it will look, it will really come together. And then on the top here, I might pick a color or I might just do tiles, I'm not sure. Again, I'm trying to save weight, so color might be the best option for that direction and I will have some wood trim which will have a little bit of a space where I'll tie in LED strip lights which will be on the edges all the way around so you can see at nighttime maybe even in the toe kick area. My guys have been gone for three days for a holiday. I have this last day to get things in order so when they come back they can start putting thick primer and getting ready to paint. And I'm trying to put stuff in place so they don't overpaint. I have to cut back the paint and re-epoxy after they do that. So I'm trying to get the stuff that will need to stay pretty much before they get here. So I've been working kind of hard. The galley I pretty much got situated. These boards are lightly epoxied in and they're going to be heavily glassed in. Why not? It's there and um, I have taken a lot of this boat apart. So I'm just being ultra safe. Let's see if I can build an island now.
Looks nice and black, doesn't it? Looks good, black. Good job, my team. Fast photo. Well, the guys are busy upstairs epoxying with some extra uh, black epoxy I have. It works very well. It will soak into the wood and it will add some strength and uh, we'll keep the termites out. That was our main goal. We stripped down all the walls just to see if there were any termites and there wasn't. In that section there was perfect. There was nothing there. Just being super cautious, I, I had them glass the two aft crossbeam areas entirely, the whole thing. So we have um, a lot of strength. It's now one piece basically with cloth. And the front ones were not fiberglassed at all for all the years that this boat has been on the water. But I thought it might be time because I have removed a few things. I've created another box structure, but just to be safe, let's uh, glass it all together. So we did that on the back ones, the front ones. We just did the lower section, uh, tied that into the plywood, and now we're painting it all black with the epoxy. So should be good. So while they're doing that, I'm working on a project down here that I've been playing with for eh, a few hours. It's, um, it's a ladder that I've just put some goopy epoxy everywhere. It's all made of uh, pretty much Kevlar and a different color of Kevlar. Feather light, honeycomb Nomex, Nomex honeycomb, which is super light. The whole ladder probably weighs, I would say no more than five pounds. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of taping with some fiberglass just in the joints underneath. It should be good. And I'm gonna have it shaped to what I want. And this goes in the new section. Where we built the floor, we now need a way to get down to the lower section, to the forward bedroom and the forward head and all that stuff. So I needed to do something. And I like to do light stuff. And I have a bunch of this Kevlar stuff over here. And I wasn't sure what to do with it. There's some more panels there. There's some carbon panels as well. So overall, came up with an idea. We'll make a ladder. These are all carbon pieces and uh, Kevlar. So I'm taking what I have and making the best out of it. At the end of the day, I will have uh, uh, not enough material to go around. For all my plans, I will need to get some more stuff. So but basically, we're going to start the outside. Uh, we did the glassing of the roof today, which was huge. So that's all been done. It's been glass. So we're going to tie in now the new brows, which are the angles on the edge. I've already cut them in. They look amazing. So we're going to mount those and get this thing looking ship shape. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll update you as we go along. Hey, if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. We'd appreciate it.